cook for back, you don't know me Ever since a nigga got a name That girl wanna act like she knows me Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy, No Rap Reactions And today I'm back here with a new video So we're gonna continue reacting to some more uh, Polish uh, history We reacted to Polish history for the first time In one of my last Polish videos So uh, I got a lot of requests and a lot of comments about continuing uh, to react to some more history about Poland. So we'll see if we learn something new today, man. I definitely learned a lot at first video. And this video seems to be uh, a three-part or four-part video. So we'll be releasing the parts um, in separate days. So today I'm going to be reacting to obviously the first part. So yeah, man, let's check it out, man. Indeed, Poland did begin with Slavic settlements. The Slavs are likely a civilization that emerged as remnants of the early Indo-European peoples who had migrated out of the Caucasus. From their homeland in Central Europe, they began to expand and migrate in response to the weakening of the Roman Empire. You'll remember this from previous episodes as the Great Migration Period. The Poles loved their new home, which they shared with Germanic tribes from Scandinavia and the occasional Asian nomadic raiders. The Slavs of Poland were organized into smaller tribes living in and around the Baltic Sea and the Vistula River Delta. They united under Poland's first official leader, Mieszko. Mieszko was a Duke of the Polands. This was a good gig to have since the tribe eventually became the name of the whole country, Poland. Mieszko was a member of the noble house of Piast, whose dynasty would rule Poland for centuries. With his baptism in 966, the country slowly abandoned traditional Slavic paganism and adopted Western Christianity. Mieszko's son Bolesław the Brave expanded the territory south into what he hoped would be a strong regional power, but alas, it was a bit too early for that still. He established the Metropolitan See at Gniezno, forming the headquarters of what would become the Catholic Church in Poland. His consolidation of power led him to be crowned Poland's first official king, and then he died, mm. all in the same year, which is great. The Piast dynasty was somewhat up and down, and internal conflicts often plagued the royal court. Until this guy, Kazimierz the Restorer, restored the monarchy's control, which come to think of it is probably why they called him the Restorer. He modernized Poland into a feudalist society, which came with all those cool things like knights and lords and castles. This helped secure the uh, borders, yeah. who up until now had Some changed Game depending on who was right king. Here. The early kingdom, somewhat weaker than its neighbors, and strapped for cash, did however hold the Mongol invasion into Europe, having been sacked twice before. Notable of this time was the Polish relationship. That's what I'm saying. Poland it seems like they don't lose to anybody. You know what I mean? They haven't lost to the Mongols. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Genghis Khan in them had like one of the biggest empires to ever exist. So they survived one of the biggest empires to ever exist. Then they fight off the Soviet Union, Germany. You know what I mean? It just seems like there's some something about Polish people that they just don't give up and <laughs> that's crazy man. Ship with the Germans, whose dukes and lords had come to possess large amounts of the West, and the Teutonic Knights, who had carved out a significant state for themselves in Livonia and Prussia, a land inhabited by pagans, frequently raided by crusaders. By the time Piast rule ended with Kazimierz the Great, Poland had lost much of its territory to its neighbors, but with a period of peace, the state soon began to prosper and attract Jewish settlement. The counties in this area became a source of contention between maybe that's why uh during the uh second world war polish people helped Jew jewish people you know what i mean even though it's punishable by death uh they helped out jewish people maybe it's because they've lived with jewish people so uh for so long you know what i mean so between the kings of poland and the holy roman empire who fought over the local lords for fealty and allegiance this resulted in these counties being very mixed with populations of people from both kingdoms the whole thing was very unbohemian, really. The Jews first settled Poland as merchants on popular trade routes. By this century, the Jewish people had settled in great numbers over many kingdoms in Europe and began their long and very sad history. They were expelled by the masses in all the countries they settled and were often victims of massacres and worse, crusades. Successive expulsions led the population in Poland to swell, which was a comparatively more tolerant society, which became a center of Judaic learning and culture as the centuries continued. However, things weren't always super peachy, and anti-Jewish riots often erupted in Polish towns, and synagogues mm. were frequently burned. King Kazimierz the Great, dying without an heir, left his kingdom to his nephew Louis, the King of Hungary. Louis left his now three kingdoms to his daughters, one of whom died unexpectedly, the other, who was supposed to inherit Poland but inherited Hungary instead, and the last one, Jadwiga, who got Poland. The nobles of Poland welcomed Louis's daughter and crowned her king. 
Yes, king, not queen. King. Don't ask. <laughs> Hedwig's okay. life would not be unlike right. a medieval television drama as she was simultaneously engaged to both the Grand Duke of Lithuania, Jagiela, whose kingdom was huge and powerful, and the Habsburg Duke of Austria, who was inbred and fat. I think she made the right choice. The Union of Jadwiga and Vladislav formed the Polish-Lithuanian Union, which was now the largest country in Europe under a single monarchy. The Lithuanians mm. had become a strong military power in the previous century, capturing large amounts of Russian and Mongol land. The now combined countries spread from the Baltic to the Black Sea. The Lithuanians, with their far smaller population, never ventured too far from their castles, why would you, and preferred to rule Ruthenia from Livonia instead. So by the time of the Union, the much larger Polish population came to dominate the Ruthenia lands, spreading the language and the culture, eventually dwarfing their Livonian allies. The Teutonic Order, that German state on the Baltic, had become somewhat of a bad neighbor, leading raids, crusades, and plundering castles or otherwise- Seems like German people have always had problems with Polish people, you know what I mean? At, at the start of the video, he did say that they lived together, but it seems like after that, those first uh, few hundred years, they've just had problems with each other and they kept uh, fucking raiding Poland and a whole bunch of shit and they're still raiding Polish, uh, Lithuanian, the Union, so they didn't stop, man, throughout history, fucking with Poland people, uh, Polish people, so. Dumbling drunk into yes. Polish, Lithuanian Definitely territory, have some bad starting blood fires and other for sure, man. The union of the two states proved beneficial, handing the knights a crushing defeat at the Battle of Grunwald in 1410. They also fought numerous wars with the Muscovites, Tatars, and Ottomans. Noteworthy of the Egalian period was the efficiency of the feudal system and the pseudo-democratic nature of the parliament, who set up sophisticated bureaucracy for king approval, or disapproval, if you are unlucky. Within just a few decades, the Teutonic Order had completely lost their state, with the western half being annexed directly into Poland and the rest becoming a faith of the Polish crown. This gave mm. access of Poland to the prosperous Baltic seaports sea and an explosion in trade. Keep your eye on this, it becomes important later. The Prussian faith would later be inherited by a duke from Brandenburg, a state within the Holy Roman Empire, a trend which would become ever more troublesome as lords within the HRE would increasingly inherit lands outside the imperial borders. The HRE was weird, don't worry about it. Acquiring Danzig or Gdańsk had huge economic benefits, and cities swelled in size in response to the trade boom, like Poznan, Lwów, and the capital Kraków, and most notably Warsaw. Warsaw, or Warszawa in Polish, was up to this point just a small fishing village. Legend has it that a fisherman named Warsh happened upon a mermaid in the Vistula River named Shava. The two married and found the town of Warszawa. The Poles, like most Europeans, yeah, were Megan often embroiled in Mary wars, Mermaid's and this made famous their heavy cavalry, the Winged Hussars, which I'm sure I'll be mobbed and lynched if I don't talk about. Initially a contingent of Hungarian mercenaries, the Hussars soon became an elite shock cavalry so powerful they allowed the Poles to win many otherwise hopeless battles. The Hussars became the envy of Europe, the most powerful and disciplined heavy cavalry the Middle Ages had ever known, and are still a matter of intense national symbolism of Poland. The 16th century was a really Pretty big one. It included the Protestant Reformation, affecting mostly German parts of the kingdom, wars against the encroaching Ottomans invading Europe, advancing in science and literature with Copernicus, devising the heliocentric model of the solar system, the nationwide codification of the Polish language, and the biggest one, the changing of the Polish-Lithuanian Union into the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, a single political entity ratified by the Polish Parliament, or Sejm, with elected rather mm. than hereditary kings. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, or just Poland for short, became a center of power and commerce, and a bulwark against invading Turks would become a larger and larger problem for the European powers since their humble beginnings in Central Asia. During the Polish-Muscovite War, the Poles became involved in the Russian Succession Crisis, or the Time of Troubles, and began flexing their muscles with their famous Hussars. They even occupied Moscow for a short period, but were soon driven out because invading Russia is simply impossible unless you are the Mongols. The series of northern wars and the Russo-Polish War left the Commonwealth in a very precarious and weakened state. This was aggravated by the election of Polish kings, which opened the door for other nations to meddle in Polish affairs, which they did. A lot. During the wars, the Commonwealth lost the territory of Livonia and was devastated by the so-called Swedish Deluge, leaving much of the nation in ruins. Poland became weakened during the Great Northern War against Sweden, and during the War of the Polish Succession, it became increasingly clear yeah, that Poland's fate Sweden was going too, to be God decided damn. by its neighbours. 
the Polish parliament became Russia. ineffective due to complicated veto laws which made passing reforms or mounting resistance to invasion nothing if not impossible. The political limbo and the sheer size of the Commonwealth started to make cutting pieces out of it look pretty attractive. The last king of Poland, Stanislav II, was elected in 1764 as a puppet of the Russian Empire, aided greatly by the fact that he was in bed with Catherine the Great. Stanislav did attempt reform to try and save face, but was aware the kingdom was on its last breath. Before long, the first partition of Poland was enacted, dividing the outlying provinces between Austria, Prussia and Russia. In dire straits, the parliament was powerless to stop the invading troops and forced to ratify the new borders. The Great Sejm tried once more to reform by drafting a formal constitution inspired by the liberties of the French Revolution, but it was enough to provoke Russia again who saw France as an enemy and Poland as a sympathizer to anti-monarchical sentiments. Pro and anti-constitutional forces became embroiled in a war and Russian forces invaded to broker a defeat to the Republican movement. With an agreement signed with Prussia, the two nations annexed more territory in the Second Partition, reducing Poland to one-third its size and population. The king was horrifically unpopular. The army was in shambles. The parliament was divided and powerless. The common people were furious, and insurrections led to the National Rebellion, led by the military veteran Tadeusz Kościuszko. After an initial success, the rebels failed to garner support from many other nations, and were defeated by the surrounding powers. In 1795, the Austrians, Prussians and Russians decided to put an end to the rebellious Poles and invaded them from three sides. The Third Partition of Poland, as it became known, wiped Poland off the face of the map for the next century. Millions of Poles now oh, found themselves God. subject to whichever nation they were divided into, isolated from one another, and Poland ceased to exist. Now, as you all know, if you've ever picked up a map, Poland did indeed return as a sovereign nation, but we will have to get to all of that in part two. In the meantime, if you're interested in learning more, why not head over to the Great Courses Plus. Great Courses Plus is a subscription on- Alright, so I guess the end is just fucking an advertisement, but, uh, yeah, man, this first part was real interesting, you know what I mean? Um, uh, it, it seems as though the mid, uh, 1500s was when Poland was really, you know, uh, I guess at its best, you know what I mean? They had the, their most territory, um, they weren't really getting invaded by Russia, they were kind of the strongest country in Europe at the time, and like he said, he had, they had that crazy army where you know everyone was kind of scared of him so um yeah and then it goes from that and then in the next fucking 200 years you know what i mean they they kind of get uh, wiped off the the map itself there's no poland you know what i mean so i definitely want to see the next part and see how these polish people that uh got split up between prussia russia and i forget the other i think what was the other one germany not germany hold up let me see uh, fucking hell. Oh, and Austria, I guess. Um, yeah, I really want to see how those Polish people kind of fight for Poland back. And even though they're split between three countries, they're able to overcome it. Uh, I really want to see that. I want to see uh, what they had to do. So, uh, like I said, Polish people have kind of been geograph. Yeah, like geographically, you guys are kind of fucked just because you guys are surrounded by so many different countries and seems to me like a lot of these countries have a problem with uh poland for some reason uh so yeah you guys kind of always have your backs to the wall uh you know in world war ii it was germany and russia pushing from one side and in this video it shows you in the 1700s russia prussia and the austrian empire were like pushing poland in from three different uh directions so like i said very excited for that second part but this uh that is basically my reaction for this video if you guys did enjoy this one make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one peace